Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to uh, thank the PPC Foundation for inviting me to give this talk on prognostication uh, um, in PPC for the PPC Day 2021. We heard what PPC is. Uh, it is an autoimmune condition that damages the, the, the bile duct and the liver. And we know that uh, today PPC is typically discovered during a routine blood test. And because it's a rare condition without uh, many well-known symptoms, it can take years for some patient to receive a, a correct diagnosis. Many patients present with uh, symptoms, most commonly fatigue and itch, but uh, a relevant uh, number of patients can be asymptomatic. So. For the majority, uh, the disease is an intolerant uh, course, and most patients respond well to the UDCA therapy and uh, their life expectancy is similar to that of healthy individuals of, uh, the, with the same age and sex. There is a minority of patients who are will present uh, uh, with a, an aggressive disease that progresses to end stage and for whom replacing the liver is the only hope. Indeed, uh, approximately 6% of all liver transplants in Europe are performed due to PBC. However, with uh, an early detection uh, the management and treatment of PBC has uh, massively improved, and there is a, a growing hope that many people living with PBC will never progress to uh, end stage uh, liver disease. Uh, let's talk about prognostication in PBC. What does that mean? Uh, it is the possibility of uh, getting to know the future of the course of the disease. Uh, and already at the first visit, after making the diagnosis and the proposed treatment, we can consult patients uh, about or, 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 um, or and the, his or her family about the, the chances to the chances to get um, to experience a complication of uh, the uh, disease. With the um, research carried out over the last ten years, we have uh, several tools today available all based on the liver blood test commonly taken in clinical practice and um, and and the uh, um, and the basic uh, radiology images there are definition of response to udca that can already uh, uh, give us a rough idea on the trajectory of the trajectory of the disease uh, on the right we can see the uh, calculators or risk scores that can estimate the risk of complication at the specific time frames for uh, individuals. And, um, and, uh, uh, and finally, the ultrasound scan and the fiber scan that provide us uh, information on the level of scarring of the liver and uh, on other potential complication. To make this process of prognostication easier, we recently proposed three uh, simple classes of risk to help the, the general gastroenterologists in clinic. Uh, with a low uh, risk class, which include patients with, uh, with very good liver back chemistry, near to normal, uh, before treatment or after treatment with the ursidoxicolic acid, or patient with, uh, with no fibrosis and, and or no cirrhosis. Um, and then there is an intermediate to high risk of patients, which include uh, young patients who generally have a more inflammatory disease. They are uh, often more symptomatic and uh, there are more chances to have an overlap with the autoimmune hepatitis. Obviously, uh, serotonin patients are in, uh, are in this high-risk category for the risk of complication, although uh, if the disease activity is frozen uh, with effective therapies, even the uh, child day serotonin patients might have a good uh, hope not to experience complication. And finally, the warning category, uh, patient already decompensated or patient uh, with deep jaundice or patient very symptomatic, very itchy, uh, who should be referred to a specific PBC center. Um, our efforts today are particularly focused on patients with a difficult journey, who um, that includes patients with advanced disease, acting inflammation, uh, with a high risk of progression, patients with very symptomatic. Um, but we should be hopeful uh, even in this category, since we, we recently found that uh, for example, SRT patients respond well to second line therapy with the obedicolic acid um, as much as patients with no, with no cirrhosis. Uh, there are several drugs 
um, very uh, effective. We already have a third line with the uh, obeticolic acid and basal fibrid, which is effective and safe. And uh, there are many other uh, drugs coming up, um, coming up soon. Um, and then uh, for the symptomatic patients, uh, the, the approach to symptom is to go in parallel with the management of the underlying disease process. We should have a structured approach to management, uh, quantifying fatigue in each and its impact, addressing the uh, contributing and exacerbating factors, and supporting the patient to, to cope with its impact. It's, uh, this, this has been shown to, to be very effective. And we, we suggest that patient with symptoms resistant to medical therapy should be referred to specialist uh, management, regardless of the, the disease severity. We recently proposed to bring forward the process of recertification in PBC by assessing the fibrosis with a fibro scan with a double cutoff approach and by calculating uh, the risk of treatment failure using the uh, UDCR response score. In this way, we, we can already identify classes of risk uh, at the disease onset and manage uh, each patient early in the disease score appropriately in terms uh, of surveillance and therapy, even second-line therapy uh, for those with a high risk of failure to uh, UDCA. And uh, uh, finally, what makes us more hopeful is the pharmacological research going on in PBC that sees many molecules uh, tackling different targets of the disease. Uh, we have the uh, PPR ligands uh, uh, in, in phase three trial, uh, antinox drugs, which are antifibrotic drugs uh, that hopefully will start a phase three trial soon. And, um, and we really hope that this will help to tackle the unmet need for the well-being of patients that we face in clinical practice today. I thank you for your attention.